All right, domain, domain. What is a domain? Well, domain is a set of inputs, okay, or a set A that you plug into a function. That is what a domain is. Now, whenever you go into calculus, or if you go into advanced algebra or algebra two, um, or deal with any function, domain is always referred to as the input and is very important because you want to figure out what can I plug into this function. Well, there is, I think, a four-step process on trying to find domain. I'm trying to find domain. And what we're going to do right here is I'm going to go tell you about this four-step process. I'm going to go through this and how to find a domain of various functions. Okay? And the reason why we're doing this is because it's important, very important, that you know what you can plug into a function. All right? What you can plug in. Because if you don't know, then you're plugging in things that you can't use, and um, that's, that's not good. Not good. All right? Not good at all. Yeah. So, what we're going to want to change that frown and put it upside down. All right? I'm going to give ourselves a smile. Okay? And so, let's give ourselves a smile there. All right? Tongue there. All right, so how do we do this? Well, first off, we want to, first off, always assume that it's all reals. All reals. That is called... Um, all right, that is called the natural domain, okay, or the assumed domain of a function. You assume, first off, that it's always going to be all reals. It's always all reals unless, do, 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 unless, of course, you notice this. You may see a rational function, okay, a rational function. All right, where the denominator of that rational function can equal zero. Denominators cannot equal zero, so where this occurs, the domain is not defined there. Okay, so if you see the demand, a denominator and a rational function that can equal zero, that's not good. All right, so denominator, rational function. For those that don't know, a rational function, basic one, is like f of x over g of x, and that would be like a rational function called r of x. That's our rational function. All right, g of x cannot equal zero. All right. Another instance is when there is an even root, usually a square root. Ba -ba 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 All right, even roots. No even root can have a negative inside. Okay, can't be a square root or an even root of a negative number. That's impossible. You get imaginary numbers. So where this occurs, the domain will be restricted. Okay. All right. Also, the final thing is problems where application problems and has a restricted domain given or stated. For example, if you are um, I don't know, have a function where you're talking about um, uh, areas of of a circle, all right, and you're doing a function a of r, a of r, all right, a of r, area of a circle, r is the domain, r is the radius, okay, where r is the radius, where r is the radius, let me get a little thing here. Where r is the radius. Okay. Well, obviously, r has to be greater than zero because if r wasn't, that would be a negative radius and that would be impossible. And if you had a zero radius, that we would have a circle. So that would be crazy too. So that's where application problems have restricted domains. Well, let's go through some examples of how to find domain. Well, first off, going through that four step process. We identify our function, and our function is right here. All right, let's start our example number one. And we look at it and say, okay, all right, we're going to say this is all reals. All reals. Many different ways of writing all reals. You can say all reals. You can write it like so. You can go from negative infinity. Okay, we have x, this is our input to infinity. Or you can write it like this, interval notation. All of these different ways. All right, A, B, C, and D all refer to the domain being all real numbers, okay? All real numbers. And this is, in fact, all real numbers because it doesn't have a denominator. It does not have a square root. The implied domain, all right, the implied domain, all right, is all real numbers, okay? So that's it. Move on. So it's always all reals unless you see the other thing, okay? Right here. This is all reals. Okay, domain is all reals, unless we see a denominator. Well, we do see a denominator. It's right there. Well, the denominator cannot equal zero. Okay, well, the denominator cannot equal zero. So when will this equal zero? 
Well, in this domain, notice our input is a y. Well, y cannot be negative 5. Okay? So we could write this many different ways. We can write it like this, all reals, except y equaling negative 5. I could go y can equal negative 5, so we can write that, y can equal negative 5. We can write it like so. Uh, negative infinity to negative 5. Union, negative 5 to infinity. All those different ways are saying the same thing. All right. Um, just depending on the book or how you use it, but they all mean the same thing and they're all okay. All right. Next one we have right here. Well, in this one, we notice that it's going to be all reals. Okay, because that's our domain. That's our implied domain. But we do see a denominator. Okay, denominator. Well, the denominator can't equal zero. So we know that in this case, once again, my input's a y. Not to confuse you, but I made it y this time. So you're used to seeing other things besides x. All right, y can't equal, well, 10 appears. All right, all reals, y can't equal 10. Also, we see a square root. And when we see a square root, square roots can't be negative inside, right? So in this one, this has to always be positive. All right, so we see a square root. All right, and inside this, y minus 10 has to always be positive. Positive, okay? It has to be greater than 0. All right, so this input right here has to be greater than zero. So we can write this in equality. Well, to figure this out, I'm going to, well, it actually can also equal that. Zero, I'm sorry. But in this case, it can't up here, so I'll just keep it like so. All right, zero. And now we solve for y. So y has to be greater than 10. So this is what we got. All right, so our root has to be positive. We set it up. Well, then this becomes our domain. Can equal 10, that's already stated here. And so it's not all real numbers. And what we have is the one I boxed in is our sole answer. All right, y has to be greater than 10. Or we could write it as this um, 10 to infinity. All right, open, just so you know, when you have an open interval, that means it cannot equal to, brackets mean equal to. And that is how we do some domain problems. All right. We can also talk about domain and range all right, of these different graphs. Okay. And we'll stop there. <laughs>